Okay, in today's video, you can see we're going to go over a problem involving impulse and how we can determine the impulse from the force versus time graph. And then we'll also do that through an example where we determine the change in the momentum and the change in the velocity of an object. Okay, so here we have, this is the force versus time graph that we're going to use for this video. You can see on the y-axis, we have force measured in newtons from zero to 50 newtons. On the x-axis, we have time measured in seconds from 0 to 10 seconds. And this red line, this graph, this graph shows us the force that is applied over time to an object. And you can see at the beginning, at time equals 0, the force is 0, and then the force increases for the first 4 seconds, and then after 4 seconds, we have a constant force of 40 newtons. And that is a force versus time graph. It's the force that is applied to an object over a particular time. Now, we're going to say that that force for this problem, for this video, is being applied to an object that has a mass of 8 kilograms. All right? And in this video, we're going to do the following four things. We are going to determine what is the impulse of the force. We are going to determine what is the change in momentum of that 8 kilogram object. We are going to say if it was initially at rest, what would its change in velocity be? And then finally, we're going to say if it was initially moving with a velocity of minus 15 meters per second, that's a speed of 15 meters per second in the negative direction, then what would its final velocity be? Okay, now it's pretty straightforward. The most important thing you have to remember is when you say force versus time graph. Okay, that the area under the force versus time graph is equal to the impulse. What we mean by the area under the graph is the area between the graph and the zero line here. Okay, so it's this area under here is equal to the impulse. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the impulse. And in order to do that, we have to figure out what is the area under this graph. It's basically now a geometry question, so to speak because it's area, and we're just going to figure out the area, the regular old area under this graph. Now, we can divide this graph into two sections, because here I see a triangle, and here I see a rectangle. Now, this is also actually the whole thing here is a trapezoid, but most people are more familiar with triangles and rectangles, and that's usually the way it's done. So I'm going to divide this graph, the area under this graph, into two sections, the triangle section and the uh, rectangle section. And we're going to figure the area under both of them, and that's going to be the impulse. So I'm going to say that the impulse from 0 to 10 seconds, because we're going from 0 to 10 seconds, is equal to the impulse from 0 to 4, this is my first section, and the impulse from 4 to 10, this is my second section. This is the triangle, and this is the rectangle. So all we're going to do is we're going to figure out the area, just like a regular old triangle and a regular old rectangle but we have units, we don't just have x and y, we actually have units on this graph. So from zero to four, we have a triangle. The area of a triangle, as you remember, is one half the base times the height. So there's one half, the base is the time, so I write down here four seconds. The height of this triangle is 40 newtons. This triangle, in a sense, is 40 newtons high, 40 newtons tall, and has a base of four seconds. I multiply those together. That's uh, 4 times 4 is 16, that's 160 divided by 2 or times 1 half, and I get that the impulse of the force during the first 4 seconds is 80 newton seconds. The second part, from 4 to 10 seconds, basically the same thing, except this time we have a rectangle, so it's just the base times the height. The base is 6, the height is 4 still, no, 40 still newtons, and that's just like this base is 6 and this is 4. 40 newtons, so therefore we have 6 times 4 is 24, 40 times 6 is 240, and all I do is add those two values together. That gives me the total area, which gives me the total impulse. 80 plus 240 is 320 newton seconds. So the impulse of this force over time is 320 newton seconds. That's it, area under the graph. Okay, now it says, what is the change in momentum? Now, from the previous slide, we figured out the impulse is 320 newton seconds. You remember we have our momentum impulse equation, which tells us that the change in the momentum, the mass times the change in the velocity, is equal to the impulse. The impulse we calculate as the force times the time. I made a video what momentum is and what impulse is. You can look those up if you need to refresh. 
but it basically says the change in momentum is equal to the impulse. We calculate that the impulse is 320 newton seconds. So that's right, you guessed it. That means that the change in momentum, momentum is the symbol P. This is momentum from 10, from 0 to 10 seconds is also 320. Now the units for momentum are kilogram meters per second. The units for the impulse are newton seconds. These two units, this unit and this unit are the same. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. We can cancel one of those seconds from the second square with this second, and we get a kilogram meter per second. So this value and this value are equal, and that's what we got from that equation. That is how we find out the change in momentum by first finding out the impulse. Okay, so now we can calculate what is the final velocity if the object was initially at rest. So the impulse was 320, the change in momentum was 320. This is the equation we have, which is the mass times the change in velocity is equal to the force times the time. The change in momentum is equal to the impulse. You can see we know what the impulse is because we calculated that earlier. Okay, we know what the mass is because that was given, and we're going to solve this equation for the change in velocity. I'm going to multiply both sides. I'm not going to multiply. I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by the mass, and I get that the change in velocity is equal to the force times the time, which is the impulse. This is the impulse which we calculated, divided by the mass. The impulse is 320. The mass, we said, was 8 kilograms. And that tells us that the change in velocity of that impulse on an 8 kilogram object, the change in velocity will be 40 meters per second. All right. Now, the last one is if it has an initial velocity of minus 15 meters per second, remember that the change in velocity from the previous slide was 40 meters per second. The equation for the change in the velocity, the change in the velocity is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So now we want to know what is the final velocity. I'm going to add initial velocity to both sides, and that tells me that the final velocity is equal to the change in the velocity plus the initial velocity. Now this is the initial velocity of minus 15 meters per second. Remember, minus, don't forget your minus sign is very important because I'm going to add those two values together the 40 meters per second, which is the change in the velocity. Uh, to that, I'm going to add minus 15 meters per second, and that's going to tell me that the final velocity of that object is 25 meters per second, because 40 plus a minus, which is 40 minus 15, is uh, 25 meters per second. That tells me that this was um, moving in the negative direction. This force was applied in the positive direction. This is a positive 40. That means what I was doing was basically slowing this object down, stopping it, turning it around, and moving it in the positive direction up to a velocity of 25 meters per second. Okay, if the force and the velocity and the initial velocity had been the same direction, then the final velocity would be 55, right? 40 plus 15 is 55. But in this case, the object was moving in the negative direction, the force was applied in the positive direction. Okay? So there you go. I think it's pretty straightforward. Remember that area under the curve of the force versus time graph is equal to the impulse. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.